What is up, our Forge Master brethren? Welcome to Forge Master Metal Reviews, the channel where you can get the most out of your metal releases, musicians, and fans alike. Today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the best ways to market your music in 2021 and grow your fan base. We have the opportunity to chat with one of the best in the music marketing industry, Matt Bacon of Dropout Media. If you're looking to find ways to market your music in 2021 and build your real fan base, these tips are a fantastic place to start and begin thinking about your strategy strategies moving forward with your music or art. What I loved about this interview is Matt is well versed in what successful musicians and artists are doing today effectively. If you like content like this, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to follow us in the future for more metal marketing tips to build your fan base and your brand. What are some other things that you'd like to know for growing your fan base and getting your music heard in 2021? Drop a comment below. Let's get into it. Go ahead and introduce yourself, my friend. I am Matt Bacon. I'm like a music marketing guy. I do marketing campaigns for a whole bunch of labels and bands. You know, the ones you've probably heard of are like Prophecy Productions, Blacklight Media, which is a Metal Blade subsidiary, Ripple Music, Artifact Records, Sfart Records, Eisenwald. The list The list goes on. Interstellar Smoke, Magnetic Eye, Dependent, like a whole bunch of labels. I do a lot of ads. I do a lot of marketing strategies. I also have an educational brand called Bacon's Bits that a lot of people follow and really connect with, where I say, usually in front of my door, sometimes in my kitchen, and share music business knowledge and ideas ranging from more technical things to mindset things. And usually I have a cigar. This is the cigar that's been in most bacon spits for the past couple months. But I just don't want to go to my humidor every time. It's definitely part of your brand. What is the importance of live streaming? And what are some ideas that you could share for some bands that are looking to build a following? With live streaming, it's just such a valuable way to connect to people one on one and to make people feel like, you know, like there's something really cool when you go on a live stream and you ask a question or, or say something and then the streamer like calls you out by name, right? Like you suddenly get this personal interaction in a way that you could really only get otherwise at a show. And obviously shows right now are unrealistic. And even otherwise, if I'm a local band, I can't really target people on the other side of the country in that sort of one on one way. Right. So I think it's really valuable looking at that and being like, ah, here's how I'm going to connect to someone person to person. You know, I think that going beyond traditional live streams is important. You know, while I do like the traditional live streams or the pre-recorded ones, you know, like I, I've heard Slagle or Frank Slagle refer to them as like sort of they're almost like presentation movie things like the behemoth one was more of a movie than it was really like a concert, which was awesome. Obviously, you know, I think that it's important to do live streams where it's like, like I have this rapper client, Pat CB here, who just like turns on the camera while he's mixing. And that's, that's it, you know, or people who are just like false gods have done this a few times where it's just like, hey, come be a fly on the wall during our rehearsal. Done. Right. And I think that doing stuff like that is really valuable. And then doing stuff, you know, this is increasingly popular, uh, like Lycanthropy do it, like sort of the live stream interview show where it's just like oh hey let's just get on instagram live and do this and you can talk to people in the industry people in your scene that's really valuable because a lot of high level people won't say yes to talk to you one-on-one -on, -one on the phone but if you interview them for your platform they're a lot more likely to say yes that's a great tip Hmm. Really great tip. If that's the case here. Like if you guys had hit me up and like wanted advice, like I would have charged you. You're you're running a business, man. And your time is valuable. But you turn it into and I've literally had people do that where and I kind of like I kind of respect it. If you're like, I don't want to pay this guy, so let me do a live stream with him so that I can get all the advice I wanted for free. Like I kind of love that. Because I've done that to people. How do you get your audience to know and define their niche uh, as a content creator? to know what strategy to implement the best. I think that it's a lot of it, more than people realize, is just going and, and looking at like, what are the artists I wanna be like? Okay, let's go take three ideas from each of them. Cause it's sort of like that thing where like, you know how like an okay band will be influenced by like two or three things, but like a great band, we, we can pull like 20 influences, right? Like that was like a big thing like when Paul Bearer broke out was that it was like, oh, like, they, they, like you can tell there's Thin Lizzy, but also Black Sabbath, but also Candle, like, and it's kind of the same thing with social media. I have very few original ideas. I just go and I'm like, okay, like here's someone doing what I do, but in hip hop. And like, I've talked, like I've talked, like Corey to Savior is like my guy and I, and he knows I've like taken ideas just straight from him and done like the, the rock and metal version because he does the hip hop version. You know, Lady J Bookums, same thing, right? Like I like her a lot too, but like we're definitely speaking to different groups of people. You can just do that. You can just go and be like, they did this type of, con they did this content. What does our version of that look like? That's fundamentally all that TikTok is. 
there really is an audience member for every type of person that's talking to them anyway. So like, even if you're rebranding something, you may talk to your audience better than someone else would. I think a brilliant example of this was when Elstorm did that Winter Sun parody video. They they beat, like, it was a literal beat for beat copy where they didn't even change the word because fucking Yari's a nerd. You can do, like, not everything has to be a parody. Obviously that works for Elstorm because they're a comedy band, fine. But, you know, you can go and you can just go and be like, okay, cool. Like, what did Cannibal Corpse post? Like, this is literally how I, like, I do a lot of, like, these six-month plans for people on, like, social media strategies and stuff. Like, so much of it was literally just going and being like, okay, let's go look at what Cannibal Corpse did on their album campaign. Okay, they did this 90 days out. They did this 80 days out. Okay, cool. I just did an album review for Gojira's Fortitude. Part of the review was looking at their branding and, you know, the fact that they're going for the arena game and basically trying to be the next Metallica. And that's not easy to do, but their branding is on point. You know, back in December 2020, they started posting their singles and they had release strategies in between each single. It's super bizarre because like I would like bump into those guys in bars when I was a teenager because I lived in France and I just like like they were they were like already somewhere but they weren't like so big that like they couldn't go to a bar so now i'm just like oh cool yeah what's up mario and joe <laughs> like, i never like knew them knew them but i would always be like oh he's in go like, oh. sort of going into the social media route now so you know your instagrams your facebook's all the all the different platforms and it's definitely important if you're an artist nowadays to be very familiar with and being ahead of those trends to make them work in your favor what are some ideas for bands just starting out or, you know, kind of having a following that they could do to push through on social media. Okay, so there's a couple aspects. One is you want to bring in as much behind the scenes as possible. And then two, you want to build brand as much as possible. Okay, so when you do behind the scenes, I'm talking like have playthroughs of everything, have, you know, commentary tracks of everything, have, you know, rehearsal footage, you know, go live when you're jamming alone. Capra are amazing at all of this, uh, who I just put out on Blacklight and I kind of dictated a lot of this love them right was that it was like look like no like you guys need to just keep going live and you need to keep doing these things because like the whole appeal is like you're fucking hardcore kids and full of hate and it's great and and it, it kills it kills every time and you know so you want to do that component where it's behind the scenes getting people to make you feel like you're in the part of the story uh jesse cannon uh, who wrote this amazing book called get more fans one of the books i have bought the most for people which shows you how highly i think of it he talks about he has this quote he likes this site where it's like 64% of people are more likely to spend money if they feel they have a direct connection to the band, you know? And I think it's just so, I think that's especially important in rock and metal where there is sort of this DIY spirit, right? Like in pop, on some level, I want Kesha to be untouchable. Actually, Cardi B is like a really good example of like a modern day fertility goddess or whatever, you know, like that's her branding. Absolutely. You know, like you don't really want Cardi B to be real. You want Cardi to be to be like this archetype of female empowered sexuality. Right. But like in metal, you don't really want that as much. You really want more of that like connection. You know, so that's the one big piece. The other piece in terms of building brand is just like posting shit around who you are. So this is shouting out your influences, which does really goddamn well and no one ever does it. Shouting out your friends bands, which does really goddamn well and no one ever does it. Memes that are funny and directly relevant to you. People do do that. Um, but but also that has to be in moderation. That's the problem, right? Is that some people are told like, oh, memes, okay. And then that becomes their entire strategy. Barring like certain hyper specific genres. And if you were like making a lot of memes about you outside of that, I don't think that would really work, right? So like memes you can do, but I try to max them out at like once a week or something, right? But, but again, like a good meme, like I have a really funny, um, mayhem meme that i post like once a year and it gets like four thousand likes every time and it's literally like a girl a girl crying with a cat and like digging into her burnt uh tomato sauce and it says dawn of the black hearts <laughs> i've seen that one <laughs> May yeah right it's fucking classic but like you know like stuff like that though builds brand and tells people oh this is who they are this is who their influences are this is what they think is funny um, another thing you can do to build brand really well is to do like gear shots. That's kind of a blend between behind the scenes and brand building. I was talking about this with my boy today, Chris Latta from Lava Born. He and I were talking, we run Dorkscography together, which is our album a day listening group. Um, but he was talking about how metal is largely a fan base of musicians, right? So it's like, when you talk about musician shit, people are gonna respond. And I think that people sometimes are skittish about marketing to other musicians, but like, I'm not sure if I know any metal heads who don't own a guitar. 
mm. look behind us. There's yeah. guitars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Like even like the most casual metalhead like owns an instrument. You can talk about this shit. They 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 probably spent some amount of money on it, even if they don't do it anymore. I kind of talk about it like in the sense of like, there's really room for all of us to be doing this stuff. Talking about cool shit that's just your own version of it. It's not pie. It's not like there's like not enough to go around. There's absolutely new ways you can do things. If you inspire a friend that all of a sudden comes up with the next big thing and they're buddies with you, they're gonna want to bring you along anyway. Well, and it's just like all of art. To so- like there's so rarely unique geniuses in art who somehow come up with a totally new thing, right? Like it's always like pretty obvious. You know, but frequently people don't know where to look. But And there are definitely people who move things further along than others. But I think like even like something like Lemmy, he's like kind of point zero of death growls because Venom cite him and then Venom leads to Bathory, which leads to death, which yada, yada, yada. Like even Lemmy would be it was like super open about like what he was taking stuff from like Screaming Jay Hawkins. Right. You know, so like I, I think that people get really in their heads about like, oh, I need to be like completely iconoclastic. I'm not sure there's that many people who were completely iconoclastic who didn't suck. You just dropped a bunch of names, and I think that that's really the key here for pushing through on the social media aspect, and that's look for the people in the communities that you want to be in that are killing it, and how can you do your version of that? And, like, literally any time I'm, like, low on inspiration for Bacon Spits, I just go and stalk some of the people I mentioned earlier and a couple of my other homies, and I'm just like, oh, Anthony Pacheco talked about this, and it did good for him. Let me, let me talk about this. Maybe I have a different perspective from him, or he's kind of doing, you know, he has a kind of different audience for me anyway. So it's, like, fine. Like, I'm just going to go built on that and i know a lot of those guys have done stuff built on me right which is which is also cool you know because we're feeding off each other and you just bring everybody along the more you talk about this stuff the more other people are going to do it the more success you have in the scene with people who are working on this and everybody wins what are some of the biggest things that bands should be doing right now to up their marketing game spending a lot of time on tiktok even if you're just consuming, consuming, consuming for five or six hours, consuming social media in a thoughtful way. Because I think that there's a lot of people who spend the minimum amount of time on social media and then don't understand why they don't get anywhere. And it's because they're not really trying to pay attention and understand like what's working, you know? And this is something I need to be better at, but I also like educate myself and read a bunch of things and I'm involved in it every day. But I think that if you spend more time just kind of consuming, you sort of learn what works. And I think TikTok is a particularly potent platform. There's still, there's still after me talking about this for like a year there's still a lot of first to market potential for rock and metal and tiktok right it's it's starting to shift but even so like you know you want to you can get in there still and be one of the main people and dominate and i think that's really interesting is just taking the time to figure that out and realizing that like video content like that is a hundred percent what's happening moving forward video content was already the best thing on instagram you know and i think we're kind of headed towards a very like symbiotic Instagram TikTok world because I do think people still value still images but I also wonder about the long-term security of Facebook as a company. So that transitions to my other point which is that even with the iOS 14 updates even with all the other bullshit you have to deal with Facebook ads are still one of the best ways to make money on the internet as a metal band. If you do them right you're going to make a fuckload of money. Like I've literally done ads where I put like 200 bucks in and got like it was for the right sort of product or whatever. If you build up your audiences, if you know how to target people, if you take the time to target them effectively. An example is like this Coven art book we just did, right? Was I literally just went in and I was just like, okay, well, let's just target everyone who interacted with the previous Coven stuff that we did. And then let's go build a lookalike of previous Coven buyers because we have that information. So it's like, cool. Now we can hit all these people tight. You have these audiences there that exist already. You can build them, you can grow them, and you can capitalize on them. People aren't doing it, and you have your fans who have shown they give a shit. And I think the key there, though, is you need to make sure that you have a good product first. Yes, this is the uh, that's the dirty secret no one talks about. Ben from Metal Sucks always talks about how a lot of bands are okay, you know. And I always talk about how it's really easy to write a B level song, and it's really hard to write an A minus. And that's just the issue, right? And like, there's things you can do to bring that B to a B plus or even an A minus sometimes if you get a good producer in or you get a good mix in. Like I've heard Mark Roselli, one of my best friends, this producer, just transform things. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like you got some something horrible and you turned it into poetry. Part of metal's problem is that it's all about being supportive of each other, which is awesome. That needs to happen more. But simultaneously, that support needs to come with more constructive criticism. Agreed. Who are some bands on your own roster and people that you admire that are really killing 
this. Fans like Capra. I'd love for you to shout some of those people out right now. Capra are doing really good. Fractal Universe. I'm starting on their. I started on their campaign yesterday. Uh, their homies. They're doing really good. Really interesting stuff. Really took a step forward on this album. That's a really interesting band to me. I think that like even within like stoner rock stuff, like War Cloud is really exciting right now. Heavy Temple. We have a record from them coming out. That's going to be a monster. Uh, I really enjoy what I'm seeing from Riff Lord on TikTok. They're one of the best stoner bands on TikTok that I've been really impressed with. There's this band from Australia called Nicholas Cage Fighter. We just signed to Blacklight Media and Metal Blade, who are killing it. You know, who again, it's just sort of this idea of they're just so good at documenting their live shows. And they're just like, yeah, we have this fucking insane live show. People go, they think they're going to die tight. Let's, you know, we're in Australia. Let's communicate this idea of, oh, hey, come to our show, get your face melted off. You know, so they do a really good job with that. Those are some of the things I think are really exciting. You know, I think I think it's easy to be like, oh, I'm too old for this or something. But then you need to go look at like Arthur Brown or Coven who started this in the 60s and both have amazing social media presences. Fucking crazy how good Jinx is at Instagram. Arthur Brown has the content to post whatever dumb fucking amazing photos of like oh here i am with with Jimi hendrix and you're like oh okay and he just kills it that way so like you're not too old because i know 60s pop stars who are good at this you know rob halford is good at this rob halford has one of the most compelling instagrams and like clearly doesn't have a huge understanding of how instagram works but he's just like so authentic and honest and real about it trevor from black dahlia same thing like that's and he's a good example of like even if you're like super nerd death metal dude you know which he is sort of the patron saint of he has a really good instagram and he's really good at what he does there i would love for you to take the last couple minutes here to plug everything that you got going on talk about your business your website how people can get in touch with you the kind of services you offer bands follow me on instagram tiktok twitter those are the main places i am bacon stop bits uh for daily advice videos hit me up for if you want if you have any questions i'll just answer them you know we can probably work together on something if you really need help uh you can find out more at dropoutmedia.net i'm, I'm around dropout media bacon spits come watch some videos of me with a cigar shouting about marketing i think you'll uh you'll probably enjoy it you're the man dude thank you so much for your time thank you so much I appreciate you guys dealing with my time constraints, so that is much appreciated, too. And hit me up anytime you need anything, okay? Sounds good, bro. You got it, brother. Take care, man. Take care. Oh, man, like Roman salute to say goodbye? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> About that. <laughs> I was into, like, the sailor thing, but I'm really, like, that's cool. <laughs> Take care, man. Be well.